I'm home. Hello and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are joining me for the first time today. My name is Lucy and I have just got home from an eight month trip backpacking in Southeast Asia with my fiance Callum. I actually landed on Monday morning. Today is Wednesday and I'm only just getting around to filming this video. If some of you may have seen, may not have seen before we left, I filmed a pack with me video for a open-ended ticket to Southeast Asia. At that time, we did not know how long we were gonna be away for, but eight months later, it's August now here we are and we have arrived back in the UK some people requested that I filmed an unpack with me video so you could see the comparison of what I left with and what I came home with and I thought that was a really great idea so I'm here to show you what is left in my backpack and all the stuff that made it home I know this video is gonna be long so I'm gonna jump right in so this is the bag that I took away with me it is the mountain warehouse 60 plus 20 liter bag it also came with a mini backpack which I might as well start by saying it held up really good up until the last month where the top of the bag ripped open completely and I've just been walking around with it like that for the last month or two. My big bag has been absolutely amazing. Callum actually came away with the same bag as me but in a different colour and his struggled a little bit where the poles in the back, the support poles, they broke through the bag pretty early on into our trip but it didn't really make a difference to the actual bag itself and he did end up keeping it. Anyways, my bag has been brilliant. I've actually had no complications with this bag at all. I've not had any rips, tears, I've not broken the handles. There's been nothing wrong with it. So if you do need a 60 litre bag, I totally recommend this one. It's been brilliant. With that being said, on our next trip, we'd definitely go for a smaller bag because it's just a lot to carry. Apologies for the weird angle. I have made a list on my phone of items that I regretted not having, things that I would 100% bring again and I definitely recommend having, things that I wouldn't bring next time and also things that I threw away and things I brought along the way as well. So let's unpack my bag, shall we? So I'm gonna start in the bottom section just because I already had it open from this morning. And in here was where I had basically all of my miscellaneous, objects I had everything else that wasn't my clothes so I have my toiletries my first aid kit my electrics blah 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 I am so glad to see the back end of this backpack I can't tell you after eight months of living out of a bag I'm just ready to have my wardrobe again if you guys had seen my pack with me video you will notice that this was the toiletries bag I took away some of you might have thought it was really excessive but to be honest with you I have absolutely needed everything in this bag. I've used everything and now it's looking a lot emptier than it did when I left. One thing I actually haven't written down but I really would recommend not taking is makeup. As a makeup artist, I thought I was definitely gonna wear makeup more than I did. And honestly, I could count on my hands the amount of times I put makeup on in my trip. It's just too hot in Southeast Asia to put any makeup on. Okay, so that is the bottom section of my bag. I've got all of that out of there. See, the zips are still really good. If anything, they actually feel stronger now than when I left. So I basically had my bag packed the exact same way the entire eight months because it meant that I knew where everything was at all times. I knew that everything was gonna fit in my bag and I didn't have any problems unpacking and repacking my bag when I needed to. Oh my God, half of this stuff is gonna have to go in the bin, guys. It's absolutely disgusting after wearing them nonstop. And that is my bag. So in here was all of my shorts. Out of my shorts, the only ones that I would probably not bring with me next time is my denim. I honestly wore these maybe three or four or five times in the whole trip. All I ended up wearing was floaty, airy shorts or cycling shorts. I never ever wore my denim. My cycling shorts, again, I did wear those a couple of times. Even the cycling shorts, when they're stuck to your legs, it's a little bit irritating in the heat. My pajamas, I've got my dresses in here. This t-shirt dress, guys, was a godsend. When you wanna throw on something in the morning for breakfast or just run down the shops or go to dinner or whatever, throwing on a t-shirt dress was the easiest item to have with me. My beautiful skirt that I bought in Thailand and my skirt that I ended up buying in Cambodia. These cycling shorts which have got holes in them and they're ready to bin. This dress was the only one nice dress I had with me on the trip. It's the dress I got engaged in. It's the dress I wore when I went to Uganda. It's just a really lovely statement dress and I'm so glad I had this with me, although it's creased to shit now. <laughs> That's one packing cube unpacked. 
On to swimwear. I did have quite an excessive amount of swimwear with me. I'm not gonna lie to you. I did make swimwear a priority though because obviously I knew I'd be spending a lot of time in water on the beaches. In all honesty, I wouldn't pack less. I actually think that what I had was maybe a bit extra, but I did wear every single bikini multiple times and I was able to mix and match with the tops and the bottoms and everything I had came in handy. This one is probably the one I wore the least because it's my long sleeve high neck one and obviously it's very hot out there. But this was really good when I was sunburnt, when I was snorkeling and when I was surfing as well. So I do think that this was a good thing to have with me. This is my lovely zebra sarong that I bought when I was in Uganda. I also use this as a towel and also a blanket sometimes as well. So it was really good to have a versatile item with me. Beach cover up. I've got a sarong which I actually only wore a couple of times. Oh my god, all of these they smell like chlorine and they smell like washing powder. They just need another good soak, I think. On to my t-shirt. So I actually wore every single t-shirt that I brought with me. Some of them more than others, granted. T-shirts became my best friend. T-shirts were the best because I was able to cover my shoulders and have something that was a bit floaty, a bit airy and not be too hot. So I ended up wearing t-shirts and cycling shorts quite a lot just because I didn't want my shoulders on show because they burn so easily. I ended up picking up this shirt for the full moon party in Koh Phangan. I had every intention of wearing it and binning it, but then I actually grew quite attached to it. And I quite like it. It was literally in the market. It's obviously a repurposed shirt and I bought it for about one pound. Now that I'm home, I'm probably gonna bin it because I'm not gonna wear it, but it was a nice little thing to carry with me for a while. Bucket hat was an absolute necessity. I wore this a lot. My gym shirt, which I only wore a couple of times on certain hikes when I was going through the jungle and whatnot, I wore this. And obviously the fabric makes it so much easier to dry out once you've washed it as well. To be honest, there's not a lot in here that I wouldn't have brought again. I think I would have chosen different tops if I go next time, but otherwise they've actually been fine. I've not really found that they were an inconvenience at all. Well, now that my floor looks like this, maybe I will just zoom in and talk you through some of my main items. So I'm just gonna start by talking briefly through the items that I 100% did need, did use, and would definitely, definitely recommend having if you are going on a long backpacking trip. Up first is my phone case with the strap. I underestimated how handy this thing was gonna be. I did not take this off my phone for eight months. It was on my body at all times. As you can see, it used to be yellow. It's filthy now. It was so handy to have it across my body at all times especially when I was on the motorbikes and I was getting up directions. Honestly, such a convenient thing and it was super cheap as well. You can find these for like dirt cheap online. My second thing, which I don't have on me right now, but would be my Birkenstocks. If you are contemplating which footwear to bring with you, which is gonna be comfortable, durable, and last you for a long trip, I highly, highly will recommend Birkenstocks. I had never had a pair before we went away. I bought them purposefully for my trip and my God, they were amazing. Granted, they absolutely stink now. They are disgusting on the inside but on the outside they look fresh and they have been so comfortable to walk in especially in the heat they haven't rubbed us once or given us any problems and I just really recommend getting a sturdy pair of shoes and Birkenstocks were brilliant. My next item would be a trusty tote bag. Sounds silly but it's such a simple thing that came in handy so many times. I think I mentioned this in my three month update video but a tote bag will be your best friend for your washing, for your shopping so that you can stop the single use plastic because that's a huge issue in Asia. Just a tote bag handy at all times will be your best friend. The next thing would be sun cream. Definitely, definitely bring your own sun cream because it's really difficult to get a hold of in Asia, especially ones that don't have whitening, brightening properties and that aren't gonna cost you an absolute arm and a leg. I brought out about five or six full-size sun creams with me and about two face SPFs. It was a little bit heavy and annoying to carry at first, but by the time you finish them, you think, God, I'm so glad that I had those with me because then I haven't had to buy all these rubbish ones in Asia. I definitely recommend bringing your favorite SPFs with you and a lot 
of it. Next up is my eye mask. This I have never worn in England. I never wear eye masks ever at home, but this became a real staple for me for long transport journeys, especially on the overnight buses in Vietnam. And obviously in dorm rooms, not everyone wants to turn the lights off at the same time that you do in your dorm rooms. So having an eye mask is a real, real savior. So this is something that I actually didn't originally take away with me. I actually picked this up along the way, but this is a neck pillow. Surprisingly, I absolutely loved having a neck pillow. And originally I had a little blow up one. It broke within a few months, but I picked this up in about May and I've carried it with me ever since. It's actually been a godsend, especially in Indonesia and Sumatra. We were doing non-stop road trips, long taxi rides and bus rides. And honestly, this was so handy for flights, cars, taxis, buses. If you have the room and the patience to carry it with you, I 100% would say bring your neck pillow. It was definitely better having it than not having it for sure. The next thing that I don't actually have with me, it's in Callum's bag, but was the fold away backpack that we had. It's about this big and it basically folds out into a full size backpack and then you just fold it away again. That was a really, really amazing thing to have with us as well because it just gave us that extra bag space basically when we didn't want to take everything out of our daily bag. If we needed something just for every day to take our bottles and our cameras and whatnot in, it was really amazing to have that with us. And then you can just take it out, use it and fold it away again and put it in your backpack. Really recommend getting one if you can find one. This one's for the girlies, but before I came away, I actually came off my pill. I've been on my pill for about seven years and I decided to give myself a break. And for my periods, I decided I'm gonna try using a moon cup. So I took a moon cup with me and at first it took a good few months to get used to using. But by the time I was used to it, I was so glad that I brought it out with me. Tampons are impossible to find in Asia. And again, if you do find them, much like the sun cream, they are really expensive. But for travel purposes, it was really handy that you can just rinse it out in the sink and reuse it and then boil it in hot water to sterilize it at the end of the day. So a really handy thing if you guys are contemplating making the switch, you definitely should try it. Next up will be my raincoat. This is just a pack away Mac. You will definitely need a raincoat. I don't need to say much more. Bring a pack a Mac. Two more things that I actually don't have with me as well because Callum has them is a washing line and also the travel washes we got from Dr. Beckman on Amazon. They were just tiny little pouches of laundry detergent. You will end up having to do your laundry sometimes where you will need a detergent and also just for washing your stuff in the sink. And having the washing line as well just literally folds away really small and then you can stretch it across anything in the room and you can hang your clothes over it to dry. We also used it for when we were in hostels that didn't have curtains on them and we just put it across the bed and put a sheet over it and then we could use it as a curtain. So definitely have a travel wash with you and also a little travel washing line as well. This one sort of goes without saying but packing cubes there's a reason why every backpacker tells you you need these and it's because you do. They literally just help to keep everything together, everything in one place and helps you feel like you've got your life sorted out a little bit. So packing cubes are an absolute necessity. You can get them on Amazon, basically everywhere. You can find them everywhere online, get them, you need them. Also something that I picked up along the way was this bum bag. You may have seen these before. It's basically a dupe for the classic Uniqlo bum bag. I actually bought this in Changu in Bali. I I got it from a market and I got it for about the equivalent of like six or seven pounds. So really affordable and it's absolutely amazing quality. It's very similar to the real one. I underestimated how roomy these really are and you actually can fit so much in there. I stopped wearing my original bum bag, which was literally just a waist bum bag quite early on into the trip. And then I made the switch to crossbody bags. Next time, I think I'm only gonna bring these ones because they were just so much easier to have across my chest. The last thing I'm gonna mention is actually another one for the girlies, but it would be hair oil. Bring your hair treatment, bring your leave-in conditioner, or bring your hair oil because the Asian water ruins your hair. I was honestly losing hair in the clump load. Luckily, I had with me my Moroccan oil in a little miniature size, which is my absolute baby. I love my Moroccan oil. I always use it at home, and it did definitely save my hair when it was in need of a little bit of TLC. Actually, the same applies for a lot of your favorite toiletries. If you use it at home and you use it on the daily, bring it with you. It will not be an inconvenience to you to carry if you genuinely use it every single day. 
And the final category that I'm just gonna talk you through was things that I regret not having. So number one for me was gym shorts, gym wear. You really do sweat, especially when you're walking around in the city and you're doing a lot of steps, a lot of activities and physical exercise. I really regret not having more actual gym shorts. So definitely bring those if you're going away. Next up is more thin floaty over shirts. I did end up buying some in Thailand and you can get them literally everywhere in the markets but it's really nice to just have something thin floaty to cover your shoulders so you don't burn and just put on top of your little crop tops but yeah thin floaty shirts were amazing for the heat Next up for me was dresses. I wish I had more dresses with me, some for daytime and some for evening. I ended up wearing t-shirts and shorts pretty much every day, which was absolutely fine, but I do sort of wish I had more dresses with me just to feel a little bit more girly and a little bit more put together in one go. Next thing is water shoes. Again, can definitely buy these in Asia. You could probably get them anywhere. We didn't have any form of water shoe. So when you're walking through the pebbles on the beach and going into the water, sometimes there's coral which is really sharp and Callum and I ended up actually cutting our feet a couple of times on the coral. Water shoes no matter how ugly are a must. The next thing for us would have been a regular sized towel. Again, I just spoke about the towels. We had a medium one and a really small one, but I think next time we will definitely just bring a normal sized towel, either microfiber or just a normal towel because it is actually so jarring trying to dry your body with a tiny little sort of medium sized or small towel. Yeah, I think next time we will bring our own towels with us and make that a priority. The next thing for me would have also been a small dry bag. Now I'm absolutely gutted because I actually have one and for some reason I just didn't take it with me. Callum actually had a bigger one. I don't know what sort of literage his was but in the markets we ended up seeing all of these tiny little ones where you literally will just put your phone and your valuables in it and take it with you and they also have like backpack straps so you can wear it as an actual bag as well and double up. I 100% recommend either having, buying or bringing a tiny little dry bag for when you're going in the water or on the beach on a boat and you want to have all your valuables with you definitely have a dry bag and also sticking to that sort of theme would be a snorkel it sounds probably a little bit weird because a snorkel is big and it would have taken up a lot of room in our bags but we really didn't realize how much snorkeling we were going to be doing and you definitely can obviously rent them when you go on boat trips they give you them to use but the amount of terrible snorkels we use and it honestly ruins your experience when you've got a snorkel where you can't breathe or you're swallowing water or it keeps rushing in through your mask it's not worth it it ruins your experience so if you think you can prioritize bringing your own then you definitely should because i think it would have made such a difference for us and finally from the things that i can remember at least is a usb for each country. Another really annoying one because we had a multi adapter which basically works for European, English and whatever other plug sockets you need it for which absolutely was amazing by the way. It definitely did its job and it worked the whole trip but the one thing that is really annoying is sometimes because the multi adapter is so big it's a big square and it's a little bit heavy when you're putting it into the plug it sort of weighs it down and it doesn't always sit in the plug properly which I found was really really annoying. Of course you can buy these out there as well so don't worry too much if you don't bring them with you but we regret not buying or not having with us just one of each individual country's adapter so that we could use that in replacement if the other one was playing up. It's just something that we spoke about a few times and I thought I'd throw it in the mix. I'm also just going to throw in a little section at the end of this video of things that I threw away. You might be interested to know what things I left behind slash threw away. My black Converse, they lasted about three months before they went in the bin. They were ready, they'd had their time and by that time I had hardly worn them. I wore them maybe once or twice and it just wasn't worthy of carrying them any longer so I threw those away. I also threw away my water bottle. We both did actually because my one broke but Callum just got sick of carrying his his. He didn't throw it away, may I add. He left it in a hostel so that somebody could have picked it up. But the reusable water bottles after a certain point were not that helpful because a lot of places we went to actually didn't have refillable water systems. So we were just buying plastic bottles all the time and we couldn't refill our bottles. So it sort of made not much of a difference and Callum just got sick of carrying it. So he left it for somebody else to have. Callum also threw away a pair of his white trainers. Again, we both had like sports trainers with us 
class like my Nikes, but we both also had a pair of like going out trainers. I had my Converse and he had his Air Force and he ended up leaving those as well. Didn't wear them, didn't need them, didn't want to carry them any longer. So we left those behind. Finally for me was just clothing. Some clothing that in the first few months I didn't touch and I didn't want to wear and I just left them behind for other people to enjoy. But other than that, I can't really think of anything else that I definitely didn't need. I'm so aware this video has probably just been non-stop rambling one. I didn't really know how else you're supposed to do an unpack with me video without talking through it, I guess. In hindsight, I would just overall conclude. My backpack Mountain Warehouse 60 plus 20 liter was amazing. It's a little bit too big though. Next time we're definitely gonna go for a smaller size backpack, probably more around 40 liters so that we can take it on board as luggage as well. You do get to realize the things that you do and you don't need very very quickly and now that we've done this trip I will definitely know more for next time the things that I do and don't want to prioritize bringing. Other than that I'm now going to go and put absolutely everything in the wash and I'm going to deep clean the shit out of my bedroom and put everything away. So I really hope you guys did enjoy watching this video. If it was at all helpful I would be really glad to know so do let me know in the comments. If you do have any questions regarding things that I brought with me or things that you're not sure about then do let me know as well. I'd be happy to answer those. I also want to say a massive thank you to anyone who has watched my channel for the last eight months. I've really enjoyed filming, editing, and uploading the videos for you guys. So if anyone is doing a Southeast Asia trip in the future, I feel really honored that you guys have chosen to watch my vlogs of my experience. And we had the absolute most amazing, magical, memorable time. And it will be memories that will stay with me for the rest of my life. It's crazy to look around and think, God, I lived out of that bag for eight months and all these things that I wore repeatedly for all that time and now I get to just wear whatever the fuck I want again. <laughs> Anyways, this is long enough. Thank you for watching and if you have enjoyed then please make sure to leave a big thumbs up, a comment down below and also subscribe to the channel for more. But for now, I love you and leave you. See you in the next one.